Looking for the best card game accessories? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products providing priceless protection. Shop at Ultimate Guard through the link in the description and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game video. Today we're taking a look at a red-green ramp deck featuring four copies of Virtue of Strength as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. First we can use the one mana sorcery adventure Garenbrig Growth returning target creature or land from our graveyard to our hand. And then later we can cast the seven mana enchantment saying if we tap a basic land for mana it produces three times as much of that mana instead. So Virtue of Strength in play with lots of basics can potentially set up a lethal Sheevan Devastator on the following turn. Let's say we have seven lands plus Virtue, then now we can tap those lands for over 20 mana and cast a Devastator to fly over for the win. So that's potentially part of our game plan. Now to make sure we have enough basics to enable Virtue of Strength, we're also running eight of these fetch lands. Cabaretti Courtyard can get both Mountain and Forest, same with Riveteer's Overlook. So these can enter the battlefield, gain a life, get a tapped basic, and make sure we have as many basics in play as possible to set up those powerful Virtues of Strength. And as another bonus, by playing a fetch land, we'll have a land in the graveyard to get back with a Garenbrig Growth, so we're more likely to get value from it, especially in a build that's playing four copies. And then our other payoffs include four copies of Itali Primal Conquer, which is great to just ramp into, but if we have a Virtue of Strength, it becomes trivial to transform Itali into the Primal Sickness, which will be an 11-11, Trample Indestructible, and if it deals damage to a player, they get that many poison counters, so it can potentially kill the opponent in a single attack, but the Primal Conquer can already provide a lot of value when it enters the battlefield. And the one reason I'm not playing more copies of Shivan Devastator in this deck is that hitting it with Itali is not the best, because then it will enter the battlefield with zero plus one plus one counters on it. So Itali and Devastator are a bit of a nombo, but I still give Itali the nod here as a more individually powerful card. And then we also have two copies of the new Realm Scorcher Hellkite, six mana for a 4-6 with Bargain, so we can sacrifice an artifact, enchantment, or token as we cast it, and if we do, when it enters the battlefield we get to add four mana in any combination of colors, and we can use that mana to use the ability for one on red to deal one damage to any target, so this can be excellent to kill some smaller creatures, can even finish off Planeswalkers or go directly to the opponent's face, so especially in combination with the Virtue of Strength, this could threaten to kill the opponent in one or two turns. And then there's a Vorinclex, a 5 mana 6-6 six, six, with Trample and Reach. When it enters we get to find two forests, so it provides immediate value. And then for 8 mana as a mana sink we can transform it into the Grand Evolution, which can also threaten to take over the game. So that's another good mana sink if we happen to have a Virtue of Strength on the battlefield. And then we also have four copies of a Bramble Familiar, totally fine to cast on turn two as a 2-2 creature that taps for green, so it can potentially cast some of our four drops on turn three, but we can also save it to use the seven mana adventure fetch quest, milling seven cards and then putting a creature, enchantment or land card from among the milled cards onto the battlefield, so that can potentially find some of our finishers, Itali, one of the more exciting ones, and can also find our Virtue of Strength to set up a ton of mana on the following turn. Once again, Shivan Devastator, a bit of a nombo there as we wouldn't be able to keep it around. And then we also have four copies of the Iron Crag as another two mana accelerant. It is legendary so we wouldn't be able to play two at the same time, but as soon as we play a legendary creature like Vorinclex or Itali, we can transform it into an equipment with a different name, at which point we can still play another Iron Crag, and then the equipment can give plus three plus three, which is also a decent mana sink. And then as my final two mana accelerant, I'm playing two copies of Azusa's Many Journeys, which lets us play an additional land, gains three, and transforms into the likeness of the Seeker. It is also an enchantment that we can potentially sacrifice to bargain on the Realm Scorcher Hellkite. It can also be said for sacrificing the Iron Crag if we drew a second one to potentially make a bit more mana. And then we also have four copies of a big score to discard a card as an additional cost, draw two, and create two treasure tokens. So those treasures can also be sacrificed to bargain to potentially enable the Hellkite, or we can just use them to cast some of our seven drops on the following turn, which can work out to be pretty effective. 
And then we've got more ramp with Topiary Stomper, a 4-4 that finds a basic when it enters, can only attack and block as soon as we have seven or more lands in play, so that's also where the many journeys and Invasion of Zendikar can come in handy. We'll find two basic lands to put on the battlefield tapped when it enters, three defense counters, and once transformed we get the Awakened Skyclave, a 4-4 creature with Vigilance and Haste, also counts as a land, and it taps for one mana of any color, so that can also help apply a bit more pressure. And then yeah, the mana base is pretty straightforward, 8 of our fetch lands, 10 forests, 6 mountains, so at least the mana base is budget friendly. Yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is decent, if we can find a third land that is. Actually, now that I look at it, Azusa's doesn't do anything at all, except for maybe cast a turn 3 Invasion of Zendikar, although playing Stomper first is probably still better. So we pretty much need to draw two lands for this hand to be great. Yeah, I think I'll still keep it. We've got a decent curve with just one more land. Get a mountain. Although even a second forest is reasonable since that helps us play Stomper and then Stomper can get a red source. Alright, so Azusa does nothing. That's always the danger with playing with a card like that. Uh, at least we hit our land drop now. So we'll try a Stomper, get it countered, likely. Nope. At least it provides immediate value. So it doesn't feel too bad if it gets removed. And the same is true for Vorinclex. Next turn we'll get an extra 3-3 three, three at least. Can also help transform Invasion of Zendikar, as Edict deals with a Stomper. A Liliana to make me discard. So I can discard Stomper, next turn play Invasion, if we draw lands probably Vorinclex. And then Hellkite can fly over to maybe take out Liliana. I did not find a land. And Big Score is still an option, which would also set up Hellkites. Although, also have to take removal or counter spells into account. So, Liliana is likely to just minus two on the likeness if I play Invasion here. And then next turn I can Hellkite, so that seems okay. Still want to get some red mana to use the ability. Could have even gotten double red. Since Vorinclex can get more forests. So Liliana minuses. At least our likeness did something. But yeah, this is a situation I wanted to avoid our opponent having a bunch of mana untapped to potentially counter or kill the Hellkite. So I think the plan is just to pass and then big score discarding invasion during the opponent's turn to help play around something like make disappear. Right, Mastermind. I could in response big score and then still pay for make disappear, don't need a second invasion. Okay, now I can also maybe sack a treasure to bargain and I'll let go of an iron crag even though it could transform into an equipment with Vorinclex. A land seems still a little bit more useful. Okay, opponent's gonna hang on to a bunch of mana again. So now Vorinclex plays around Liliana's plus, but they can just minus two next turn to kill it. Or I can play Hellkite and just hope that uh, our opponent doesn't have spot removal. I think we still go for Vorinclex, get our value, and then I'll play a land first. So I can pay for Make Disappear with Casualty. It's gonna be an Ertai Resurrected, fair enough. So that just counters Vorinclex. We draw, which also triggers Mastermind. Could play a 2-drop here, or we can keep it to use the Adventure for 7. If I play it, our opponent could minus Liliana, but Liliana's still gonna be a concern going forward. Yeah, let's just play it. If Hellkite can stick the landing, it can do some serious damage, including taking out Fairy Mastermind for just 2 mana. So Courtyard can go. Get. 
Devastator could also be effective. Okay, so let's tap some red mana, some green mana, play Hellkite. Now if I sacrifice a treasure to bargain, I won't be able to pay for Make Disappear with Casualty. So I don't think we do. Just play it normally. And then if it resolves, I can still take out Fairy Mastermind. Okay, could also play Shivan Devastator. Now that Hellkite resolved, I think I would rather take out Fairy Mastermind. Then there is a chance that a plus Liliana next turn after killing Hellkite here. Of course I would lose Devastator, but I'll give this a shot. Could also attack the Invasion of Zendikar as another alternative, but I want to get rid of this Planeswalker. Does damage happen? It does, perfect. And then now I still have the Hellkite's ability to take care of Fairy Mastermind. We're going to activate it in response. Take out Mastermind. So yeah, they're digging for answers. And if they can't find one, Hellkite certainly threatens to take over. I've got my Familiar to protect from an Edict effect. And next turn we can add some nice pressure to the board. Take three. So yeah, I imagine one of the cards in hand is Make Disappear. Another Liliana. Yep. No more distractions. Let's make this clear. And goodbye, familiar. One of your friends has to leave. And now they could still have an edict, but they let me untap so I can use the ability at the very least. So if I go for a tally, they sack Ertai to a Make Disappear. So I think instead. We either play Devastator for X equals 4, which is enough to transform Invasion and play around Make Disappear. Could also play Stomper, which is decent, as it can block Artai. And then I can uh, attack the Invasion, finish off Liliana. Yeah, I think that's totally reasonable too here. Could see Edict in response. We don't. So I can safely assume they don't have one. And then we probably want to take out Liliana before they activate it. Could wait until their upkeep, in case that changes anything. Another Fairy Mastermind. Okay, we'll just shoot that down alongside Liliana. I'll be back with friends. And then we still have two bombs in hand, so I'm liking my spot. Opponent says good game and concedes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is keepable. Two drop into four drop, hopefully. That's the plan. And we picked up a seven drop to potentially ramp into. So if I draw land, I'm in favor of Azusa's many journeys. Familiar more likely to die to removal, so it's a tough call. Also don't have double green for Stomper. Yeah, I think Familiar still safer here. If our opponent spends Ossification next turn to remove it, then so be it. But I'm hoping to cast an Invasion of Zendikar. Broker's Hideout may be pointing towards a Bant deck. Could be a Super Friends deck with a Broker's Ascendancy. Companion Attacks. Not sure what to make of this. My Ganjo cannot be channeled yet, so must be some other pump spell. Yeah, I'll just take one. And a Sunset Revelry, so our opponent was hoping to make two 1-1s one instead. Okay, so I get to cast my Invasion of Zendikar. As we drew our second Azusa's Many Journeys, it keeps showing up. And double forest is fine. So with a land, I could already cast an Itali on turn 4. If not, just go with Stomper to make sure we do. 
Okay, Hellkite's also pretty nice. Can maybe sacrifice an enchantment to it at some point. But for now, I still want to keep progressing my mana. Stomper, get a mountain. And then Familiar can attack for two. Go after the invasion. Could have also considered a small Devastator to help transform it, but I imagine our opponent was going to trump. Opponent also likely to have some sweepers in their deck, so we don't want to overcommit and put too many creatures on the battlefield at once. But uh, yeah, we've got some dinos and dragons that we can play one after the other. Now getting back ossification with the second chapter, perhaps. Hoping the exile stomper over familiar, but both could be effective at transforming invasion of a Zendikar next turn or casting a tally. So they still have 4 mana available. Potentially could see a Wandering Emperor Exile Familiar before it gets to untap. And then I could play Hellkite, sacking an Enchantment, untap some mana, transform Invasion, kill Emperor with the extra mana. It's gonna be a Falco instead. Okay. Protected by a shield counter. So I think Itali is probably the move now. Coast is clear for it. And even if we had another ramp spell, I can use the extra mana. And we hit another Atali and a wedding announcement, so get to spin the wheel again. This time finding Wandering Emperor and Topiary Stomper. Not bad. a lot of value. And then don't have any attacks. Wandering Emperor is gonna die to Falco next turn unless we plus. So that seems fine. Counter on maybe the familiar. Everything else is large enough. So we're definitely in the territory where an opposing Sunfall could be pretty scary. Falco goes after Emperor. Always glad to meet my match. So if I can draw a card with Wedding Announcement, that's better than making another token if we're afraid of a sweeper. But I think I have enough pressure in play where I don't need to really overextend. And there we see the Broker's Ascendancy we mentioned earlier. Okay. So Emperor can plus on Stomper. Attack with Stomper and Itali. Don't quite have enough mana to turn this into a poison threat. But that will allow me to draw with announcements, and then we can maybe just big score and play Nazusa's many journeys, or I can discard many journeys, still play the land, and then follow up with a large Devastator or Hellkite to try and take over the game. Not interested in transforming Invasion of Zendikar right now because we fear a sweeper. Now at the same time we want to make sure our opponent doesn't overwhelm us with the Broker's Ascendancy, which can of course be quite effective. Opponent's jumping, so yeah, I think a sweeper's incoming here. Can also pick up Bramble Familiar again to then use the adventure. So we've got a couple options. Yeah, let's just play Overlook. I can get a forest. Now we will lose Wandering Emperor to another attack from Falco first. But so it goes. Find another big score. Could cast two of those. Alright, so our opponent's gonna attack and then play Sunfall. It is gonna be large. So getting past that token could be a bit of a challenge, but we're also close to maybe killing the opponent with a Devastator after making some treasure with double big score. So we'll let that happen. Years of training for this. And there's a Sunfall, so in response, big score. Discarding Azusa's many journeys, and then I have to decide if I want to use the Familiar's ability or cast another big score. So if I were to cast another big score, we've got four treasure, 
8 lands in play. So x equals 11. If I draw a land within the two draws from big score and my draw step, it's x equals 12 and our opponent would be dead. So I think that's worth going for. All right, did not hit a land. Did find a Virtue of Strength, which could set up a lethal Devastator on the following turn. There we go. So just double checking here, but yeah, 8, 12, opponents at 12, and that should do it. So we were definitely aware of Sunfall, trying to play around it as best we could, and a Devastator helps us cross the finish line onto the next one. Okay, we're on the play with what looks like a fine hand. Courtyard gets a mountain, turn to familiar. Virtue of strength can first get back courtyard and then we can cast it for seven. Facing red aggro could make things tough. But at least Vorinclax has reach and a 6-6 six, six is not all that easy for the red deck to take out. So we could save Virtue of Strength to get back Vorinclax, or just get back Familiar if they kill it here. Invasion of Tarkir, yeah, that's pretty good. Takes out our Familiar. We'll see if they try and transform it. They do. And that Dragon could be quite scary indeed. So in terms of mana efficiency, Virtue of Strength, get back Familiar, play it, makes sense. And then we can keep this for its 7 mana adventure. And we have enough lands where I don't need to get back the fetch lands necessarily, even though the one life gains could come in handy. So if this survives I can play Vorinclex next turn. If it doesn't, we'll have to reconsider. So our opponent can deal 3 to the invasion. So if I play Vorinclex next turn, I can block one of the attackers, but they will be able to transform. I think that's still worthwhile, as opposed to trading for Felden, giving the opponent an extra card, and then not having an all that exciting turn lined up where we can't really use up all four mana. Iron Crag could maybe help us get to seven mana a little faster. For now, play Vorinclex. And then if I have a choice between blocking Felden and Phoenix Chick, it could be that blocking Phoenix Chick is better since we don't give the opponent any extra cards. They're gonna kill Familiar. Well, they forgot about Reach. That much is clear. Okay, so we definitely have a chance. So play Iron Crag, and then play Land. Do I play Familiar is the question. I don't think we do. We're a little bit light on action. And next turn, I could first play Virtue of Strength or I could straight away go for Fetch Quest. And both are reasonable. Foreign Clax is going to play defense. Don't want this transforming. Adversary gives him another Haste creature and a Phoenix Chick. So we'll see if they attack with more than one creature this time. All right, so yeah, killing Phoenix Chick is reasonable. The only problem is if we kill Phoenix Chick next turn, if they attack with multiple creatures, they could potentially get it back. Although it does require three or more. So it's not super likely to happen. If they have like a one or two mana haste creature attack with all, then that could happen. Maybe blocking Felden still is better here. Even their opponent gets to dig six cards deep for their next burn spell. If I trade Vorinclax for Thunder Maw and another burn spell, I guess I'm not too upset. It's mainly if they get double Thunder Maw going, they could deal four damage for each attacking dragon, and that's going to be difficult to overpower since our deck doesn't run a lot of removal. Opponent did find a Lightning Strike, so that's three more damage. Okay, so for now. And do we Virtue of Strength or do we Stomper plus could even Familiar? Or we can fetch Quest and hope to hit big. Tough call. It does seem like I should get on the board, but it's mostly the Flyers that are going to help transform Invasion of Tarkir. 
Of course, Adversary dealing two extra damage could also make the difference. And yeah, if I play land, play Stomper, it would be able to attack and block. It's a very difficult decision. What does Virtue of Strength do for me? It allows me to cast both Stomper and Fetch Quest next turn. But maybe I'm just better off using this now, and then next turn at the very least I can play Virtue and then still uh, play Stomper afterwards. And if we hit an Itali here, that would be awesome. And we actually did. Okay. Iron Crag, I don't think transforms, since that would allow me to play Virtue, play 3-drop afterwards on the following turn. And we actually found Virtue of Strength and Invasion of Tarkir. Now we could also get something back from Graveyard, but I imagine I prefer the enchantments. And then Invasion can finish off the opponent's adversary, and then I can attack their own Invasion. Is that worth it? I would be able to make a Thunder Maw, which can then block the opponent's Thunder Maw. Yeah, seems okay. So the risk paid off. Next turn I'll have pretty much all the mana I need to play Stomper. Familiar we can also eventually pick back up. Or we can transform Metali to threaten to just close out the game. That's probably the priority. Now what happens if we get double Virtue of Strength in play? If we tap a basic land for mana, it produces three times as much. So yeah, it should stack in multiples. So yeah, that's enough for a concession. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand is um, a little sketchy in the sense that we've got early acceleration, but second Iron Crag is redundant. And then... Devastator, not that great if we don't have a lot of mana, and then we're still pretty far from casting an Itali. Now if we draw Invasion of Zendikar in our first two turns, this hand could work out fine. But I think I still mulligan. Okay, this one will have to do. Not excited about it, Azusa's many journeys can go. The card gets worse when we mulligan and have fewer resources. Get a forest, hope to draw another one in case Familiar dies. Against Black White, I'm not counting on its untapping. Companion, so setting up for a long, grindy game, which we can try and overpower with um, our Virtue of Strength into a large Devastator, so that's maybe our plan. Do not have a double green. I think we still have to play Familiar, give ourselves a chance of playing Stomper if we don't draw a green source. But it's going to feel bad if our opponent cuts it down, since that card doesn't have a lot of targets otherwise. Frexian Arena? Okay. So opponent establishes their card draw engine, but at least we can keep ramping. Get a forest. And then we've got some hasty creatures which are good at punishing the life loss from Frexian Arena. Although I'm sure it's going to be paired with a couple sweepers and more spot removal. The Militian Field is going to struggle to find a target. Archangel Elspeth can also be a source of life gain. It's going to plus, but uh, yeah. We can threaten it with a Sheevan Devastator. In fact, just kill it outright. So that seems good. X equals 5. And then we're setting up the board for potentially a Sunfall, which is going to be rough. Followed up with Hellkites, if they then also have spot removal, it's going to be uh, pretty difficult to come back. Yeah, this is a matchup where creatures are not that reliable, as we see here. Opponent's got plenty of sweepers. One game plan that could work is just casting our Virtue of Strength, tripling our mana and then casting a burn spell to end the game, which our opponents can't interact with as easily. But uh, we're not packing any burn spells here. So that could be potentially a sideboard plan. Where you take out some of the creatures at the top ends, make room for more burn spells, and then just hope to cast your 7 mana enchantments. But yeah, now Wandering Emperor exiles my dragon. Big score wasn't bad. Can try to dig towards some more action. But fail to do so. So our opponent is in full control of the game. 
and again we're gonna struggle to find a window to get anything going. Maybe an Itali hitting a spell from the opponent, like their own Phyrexian Arena could help. That's probably our most realistic out at this point. Or we can hope for them to tap out and then Virtue of Strength into another Shivan Devastator could do it. But I'm sure our opponent's gonna keep up removal at all times, starting from a certain point. Another big score can keep digging. Any reason to keep a red mana untapped? Double Forest makes sense in case of Stomper, although it's just gonna die to Liliana's minus. Okay, we can use the Adventure here. Yeah, that seems fine, even though it uses up all my treasure. Just gotta hope to hit an Itali and then Itali into some more goodies can maybe help. Alright, we found a tally and Virtue of Strength, but we also milled our second Devastator. So unless I find another Virtue of Strength to get back Devastator, we can't set up that uh, Wombo combo to kill the opponent in one attack. So for now, I think a tally's still better. And we hit Stomper and Obliterator. Okay. Those are two pretty decent cards. Now we're protected from Liliana's minus four. And who knows, maybe we can transform Itali to uh, win the game with poison. Unlikely, but uh, at least we've got some hope. Of course, our opponent can just play another sweeper and keep plussing their planeswalkers. We also see a Loran in the graveyard, so they do actually have answers to enchantments. So even a virtue of strength may not have been uh, good enough. Liliana minuses. Goodbye, Stomper. <laughs> the only upside of Stomper is that it survives the minus two from Emperor, but I think Trample is more relevant when facing a bunch of tokens. And they Besiege the Mirror, sacking a token, potentially getting a Sweeper here. Or the end, Exiles Itali and all copies in my deck. Yeah, that uh, will probably do the trick. They get to see Iron Crag in hand. And make two more tokens. So they've got Frex and Obliterator covered. Yeah, still gonna attack with it. So go after Liliana, which can otherwise just minus two next turn. They might have another one in hand by now. I would be somewhat surprised if they blocked. Alright, Liliana down. Play Familiar. I guess we'll play Iron Crag and a land. Could keep something in hand to potentially discard to the Familiar's ability. But we can just discard whatever we draw if it's nothing relevant. And this way we play around a plus from Liliana a bit better. Virtue of Persistence can also be pretty effective. At least the Exiles are uh, Itali and Allegiance to Ashes. Haven't seen that one before. Okay, so we're just one for oneing all our creatures, as we suspected. And they still have a nice leftover. Okay, well, this game has gone pretty much according to plan, but sadly it was the opponent's plan and not ours. So they should be able to cross the finish line if they activate their creature land, so give them the GG. Strike fast and strike hard. Well, this is going to leave us at one. But yeah, the creature land would have done it. Maybe they have a shield right here. Cast Virtue of Persistence, so... Dragging it out for another turn. Alright, we'll just play another Iron Crag and call it a day. GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems keepable. Iron Crag sets up turn 3 invasion. Get my mountain. And then we can try and cast Fetch Quests, hope to get lucky. Second Iron Crag, we can either transform the first one and play, or if we find a big score, I can discard it. Opponent with their own familiar. And now Devastator could be a nice mana sink. 
better opponents on the play so they can play their own invasion. It's going to be a Stomper instead. Blue-green also gets access to the new creature land, which is quite powerful. Something red-green does not have. Yeah, play our invasion. Gets probably double mountain. And hope our opponent doesn't do the same, since then they could potentially transform it right away with the Topiary Stomper attacking with their own Iron Crag. So yeah, our decks have a lot of overlap. We'll have to see if blue beats red in this case. And of course they could have a counter spell up. Hellkite could also sacrifice the Iron Crag to uh, set up Bargain. Or we can fetch quests and see if that gets countered instead. And then play Hellkite or Devastator on the following turn. Could also play a smaller Devastator to play around, let's say, a Make Disappear. A uh, three-powered one enough to transform Invasion of Zendikar. Which isn't bad, but I think I'm going to have to slam down these seven drops at some point. So I might as well do it now. Alright, that resolved, and we hit an Itali. Could also go for Virtue of Strength, which would give me a lot of mana, but Itali could potentially give me the opponent's Virtue of Strength if they're running it, or another copy. Does Iron Crank transform? I think I'm still declining. But thanks for asking. Alright, we hit another Iron Crag, so I guess I should have transformed it in hindsight. But we can actually fetch quest again here. And then I guess this will be untapped, so might as well. And we hit Topiary Stomper now. So overall, not bad. Hit an Itali into essentially Stomper. So now we are ahead on board, and we still have two nice flying threats available, but Vorinclax can potentially block them. Okay, so let's say I play Devastator for the max amount, so that would be x equals 8, attack with Itali Devastator, 15 damage total. Is your opponent capable of transforming Vorinclax? That's 8 mana. 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah, they could. So maybe it's safer to play Hellkite with Bargain, which can at the very least kill Familiar. And then Hellkite could also maybe attack into Vorinclax. I don't hate that idea. And then I can sack the Iron Crag. Okay, so we've got a bunch of floating mana. So I could shoot two at Vorinclex, so we can attack into it with Stomper and Hellkite. And then I want to send probably Stomper at Invasion of Zendikar. So that's more likely to transform. Hellkite goes face, so let's say our opponent blocks it with Vorinclex, then they won't be transforming it next turn, and then I'm less terrified of Familiar surviving. That seems reasonable. If they don't trade here, then we get to transform Invasion of Zendikar. Still play an untapped land, and then I can finish off the Familiar, since this can also tap for red, and it does have haste. So this is potentially the best case scenario, where they wouldn't be able to transform Vorinclex. Our opponent can pick it back up to use the adventure next turn, they decline to do so. Alright, opponent is at 9. Can they get out of this? Still have a Devastator, which we can cast for at least x equals 7, potentially 8 if we tap the Skyclave, and the opponent's Stomper unable to attack and block, so they're gonna pass it back. And yeah, I imagine just casting Devastator for 7 is fine. Could also play a smaller one, still activate Hellkite twice. Let's say X equals 3. Then I can attack with everyone, activate Hellkite. Don't hate that either. 
It's maybe less all in, or even X equals four, because Skyclave does have vigilance, so it can attack and tap for mana. Seems like a good middle ground. Okay, attack with the team. Can expect them to maybe bounce one of my creatures. We'll see if they have more instant speed interaction. The Lock Whale. Okay, so probably deal some damage on the way out. And damaging Vorinclex. Still maybe the safest play. Could also go upstairs. Let's say they bounce a tally as well here. Then, yeah, I guess we would still have lethal if I just go face with at least one damage. All right, fine. Just want to avoid the disaster scenario where our opponent survives, kills one of my creatures, and gets to untap with Vorinclex. And we'll keep it on top. So is there more interaction? Another whale? Alright, put that on top so we can be guaranteed to hit our dragon. But opponent's still dead, taking eight. Alright, close one here against blue-green, seeing blue for the whale, but uh, red for Itali prevailed. Alright, so we got to see our red-green ramp deck in action. And yeah, there's definitely a few ways to build around Virtue of Strength in a Standard. Going for the creature-heavy approach gives us those powerful turns with Itali. Going down the non-creature path, we can potentially end the game with a lethal burn spell where we can sink all our mana into. So that can definitely have its advantages when facing those removal-heavy decks like we saw against Black-White. So a few ways to go about it. Overall, Virtue of Strength might be better served as just a one or two off in a two-color ramp deck where if you randomly hit it with something like Itali, it can be pretty effective, but still using the one-mana adventure can get back a key creature. But at the same time, we're not focusing too much on it so we can potentially run a few non-basic lands and it's not a complete disaster and then we can play better quality cards that don't rely on a virtue of strength being on the battlefield. I think that's probably the better way to go about it. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.